Shalom Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very troubling situation. What we're seeing here from a tweet that just came out a little while ago by Amichai Stein. He has tweeted out 39 minutes ago, breaking, Russia has deployed S-400 missiles next to the Iranian missile factory that is being built in Syria. That is very alarming for a couple of reasons. One, as we know, Prime Minister Netanyahu recently had a meeting in Sochi there with President Vladimir Putin, and they were discussing the situation of Syria. And of course, the Prime Minister was making it very clear to President Putin there that uh, Israel cannot stand for the Iranian military to be replacing ISIS in the country inside of Syria. Israel would not tolerate this. Now, if this information, if this uh, footage that we're seeing right here proves out, this aerial photo to proves out to actually be true that the Russian government has put an S-400 systems, not one, but two of those on either side of the factory there that is being uh, built there by the Iranian government and Israel were to try to take out this factory being stopped by the Russian government, this could cause a direct clash between Israel and that of Russia. What is this going to turn out into? As I stated to you before, I believe for some time that the U.S. was trying to drag both the Iranians and Hezbollah into this battle. And as I've stated all along, I cannot side with Hezbollah or Iran in this case here. I understand President Bashar al-Assad, and I do believe that he has been falsely accused and gassing his own people. But when it comes to Iran and Hezbollah, both of these groups have clearly said that they would annihilate Israel. So I understand uh, Israel's concern over Iran being on their doorsteps there inside of Syria. Very troubling situation. And if this is is actually true that Russia has put the S-400 system here uh, next to a, 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 an Iranian missile factory that's being built inside of Syria. This is going to greatly intensify the situation between Russia and that of Israel and could be very explosive, no doubt, that could turn the entire region into a world war. Now, we don't only have that there, but we also have yet another uh, tweet that just came out as well by Maurice uh, Sh Schlieppen, he has actually published here, U.S. media, U.S. special forces, and Turkey-backed militants have exchanged blows, firefights in northern Aleppo, Syria. That's a very serious situation happening there, not to mention up in Afrin, which is up there to the northwest of Aleppo. Russia also has moved in a very heavy uh, monitoring force up in that region there in cooperation with the YPG. Now, of course, we know the U.S. has been working with the YPG as well, uh, or the Kurdish faction with YPG over in al Raqqa. Uh, the U.S. there also protecting them from the Turkish, but now we see that the Russians are doing the same. So the Kurds are getting protection from both Russia and the United States, but now the U.S. has actually engaged uh, with a firefight, according to this report here, that is coming out with Turkish-backed militants in the region there. Have to wait and see how this develops. We'll try to update you more on this. We'll be speaking here tonight in uh, Huntsville, uh, excuse me, Huntsville, Alabama. And we've gotten uh, quite a few emails from you guys out there that are coming. Uh, I think we can accommodate everybody that's emailed me thus far there. It seems like we got about 20, 25 people coming there. That's pretty, pretty much going to probably max out what we have, but we are looking forward to seeing many of you that are coming here to meet with us tonight. Hopefully we're going to get into the DNA issue as well. Kind of a little overview of what's happening. That with North Korea as well. President Trump, they're stepping up the military drills on uh, North Korea's southern border there with South Korea there, only intensifying the problem, I think making it even worse. But then again, North Korea, they're not backing down. They continue to do missile tests. And the latest one, of course, going over Japan itself. That's a major threat for Japan. So you can't really blame President Trump if they were to go in there uh, and do something about it. But at the same time, are we being more provocative by these constant drills on his border? But I don't know. I don't think Kim Jong-un would change his policy. It doesn't matter if we're doing drills or not doing drills. But the big issue is, will it draw China? Will it draw Russia into a direct conflict as well? Not to mention Zapad exercises. They're getting ready to gear up. Russia claiming only about 13,000 troops being involved. America claiming about 100,000 being involved. I don't believe that Russia is right on their figures. I do believe it's going to be much higher. Whether or not it goes up to quite 100,000, can't say for sure myself. Uh, 
But nonetheless, it's becoming a very tense situation. Russia also moving in a lot of military equipment into Crimea because they're concerned about NATO's drills as well. So Russia not taking any chances, NATO not taking any chances. All it takes is one wrong move and it could turn the entire world into a powder keg. I'm Stephen Benoon. Pray for the people out in Texas there. We hear President Trump uh, has visited there today. I actually got some very interesting images sent to me from one of, uh, uh, one of our viewers there. I uh, hope to share that with you uh, either tonight or tomorrow. One, uh, I believe Sister Christine and her daughter, her daughter had actually taken some footage, uh, photos there of the floodwaters there in Houston, Texas. God bless you. We love you guys and shalom.